And then when I went to, to mute just now so I could blow my nose, I realized that I had unmuted the camera mic instead of the snowball. So <laughs> I should now be on the snowball. I'm having a day, you guys. I'm having a day. So hopefully the audio is a little bit better than it was a minute ago. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> well, I hope your DIY project goes well, Mrs. Rocky Roo. Everything should be functioning now. The webcam's audio is muted. The snowball microphone should be unmuted. And we should be good. I might need the husband to check the audio for me to make sure that I am being heard. You're fine. Okay, cool. Cool. Got the right audio now. Everything's good. It's gonna be okay. There are worse things that can happen. Alright. So I had picked up these stencils a while back to actually originally paint with them. But then I had seen people using... Oh, those are small. Well, you know what? They'll give us a base, so. Um, and then I had seen people, you know, using stencils to um, needle felt with, and I was like, oh, that's fun. We could do that. And that is all sorts of fun as my hair is stuck to them because they're plastic. Um, I'm just seeing if I have any larger circles in here. So, just bear with me a moment. All of the circu circular, circular, oh now I can't talk. All of the circular ones seem to be about the same size. They're supposed to be bubbles underwater. So But we're just going to use it as a circular base for what we're doing, and that's fine. Of course, there's all these little cutouts that they all want to grab onto each other and not sit right. Come on now, friend. I forget how much these were. Is it 10 bucks? I got them on Amazon. These are, I think, five by fives. Because I had originally got them to use them on all these wood squares I got. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. So these were 30 piece ocean 30 pieces sea ocean dot 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 afts I think it's supposed to be crafts um I don't remember who made them but uh yeah, they were five five point one by five point one And now, because this is the day we're having, it doesn't want to go, there we go. I am glad I kept that little bag. The bag has a ziplock on the top of it, so you can keep them all together. So that's cool. Alright, now we have to figure out what color we want our moon to be. Um, we have a couple of options between, excuse me, I think I want to hold those lighter blues for, for the clouds. So we have, I don't think I want to go white. I think white will be too, well, I mean we could. 
the gray might be a little dull now that I've got it against everything. That, that probably wouldn't work. So no, no gray. Sorry, gray. We have a cream and I actually don't think the cream will be bright enough either. So maybe not cream. Maybe, maybe we, we take a combination of our white and our light gray and see what that looks like. We could do that. All right. That might be too much gray there. We'll see. All right. So got some white. I think that's a bird I'm hearing in the distance. It's very strange sounding. All right. We've kind of got a color combo of that happening. So I'm going to use this as like our base setup here. Just because if I try to do a circle on my own, probably not going to go well. So I'm going to take a straight pin and uh, anchor down our stencil. That's why I have these straight pins pulled out primarily. So All right. All right, let's see what this looks like. We might end up just doing white over top of it. Let's see what we can make happen here. Now you do want to go a little bit careful so you don't break the needle on the edge of the stencil because it is plastic. And we're probably going to have to add a bit to this, like make it bigger, but we can do that once we get our base circle down here. In fact, let me get my scissors. I'm gonna trim that just a little. Oh, what is happening? We have a raid. Fresley! Thank you for the raid. Very much. Appreciate that. The song of my flamingos. Yeah, when my head's down, I like having that audio cue. Because uh, when my head's down, trying not to stab myself with these needles. I don't always see the chat, so thank you. Appreciate that. Hope all of you guys are well. And that everyone's having a good day. Oh, see? Gotta go slow around the stencil, because I stabbed the stencil, and I felt the needle not like hitting it, so... Yes, husband did our flamingo sound 
alert there in the art for that. And we are needle felting. Um, we are following a Bob Ross painting tutorial for season three, The Joy of Painting. But uh, we're on episode two. We, we already did episode one. The archives of that live stream series are on my YouTube channel, along with a speed felt that was five hours long um, <laughs> of the entire project in one video. Um, so we already did episode one and we're working on episode two now. And instead of using oil paint this time out, which we have done in the past, we're using needle felting. So just to kind of change things up a bit. So, okay, you can see a little bit of the gray come through there. I can, I don't know if you guys can, it might not be picking up on the camera very much, but I do think we need to make that a little bit bigger maybe, not much, a little bit more around. So I hope you all had a good, good stream, good weekend, good day. Oh, for those that didn't see, because now my mic is working and can actually hear me talking. Um, oh, that brightness looks looks pretty good on the camera, actually, now that I'm looking at it. You can see the, the gray shadow in there. That's all right. We still have some gray twisted into that, so. But um, I made my first 3D critter. Uh, so a lot of people tend to do the little dolls and things um, with the the needle felting and instead of like the flat painting stuff. Um, so this guy took me like all day, <laughs> like what, six, eight hours. Um, he's got a wool roving core inside of him and then he's wrapped with the acrylic yarn and roving combination of pinks that I had. And um, I even gave him little metal wire legs because we had some wire. And <laughs> his name is Marvin, not Derp Mingo. <laughs> you can give him whatever name you want. We all know what he is. Yeah, he, he is derpy, but um, <laughs> but I love him. And um, the, the base was a piece of, a half piece of a styrofoam circle that I cut down and glued some felt on the bottom of. And then I just kind of anchored in some, some acrylic yarn that we fluffed, like, like we did with all of it. And then I did a little couple light tufts of graphs there at the bottom. And he has wiggly eyes, one on each side. He does stand on his own sometimes. That's not really in frame though. There we go. You can kind of see him standing. But I am so proud of him. This is my first attempt at a, at a critter. And um, it was pretty challenging because I was like, how the hell am I going to make a flamingo with its little bendy neck? and stuff so I kind of made the body first and, and then I kind of made like a snake shape and attached it onto the, uh, the the body and that took a little bit of of uh, time to get that tagged onto there but his name is Marvin and uh, I love my derpy little flamingo <laughs> Because it was the first time that I made them. My first 3D critter attempt. Alright, so I think we'll do just a little bit longer. Oops, sorry, I feel like I had an ant on my leg. Um, just a little bit larger, although this will probably now be completely lopsided. Because I'm going to be like, yeah, we can do a circle now that we have a base circle to play off of. Eh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how non-circular this looks by the time we get it wrapped around here. So we will see how this goes. I'm hoping that we can pick up a little bit more of the gray. So it's not quite so... So 
so specific to that one spot. We will see. Because I did kind of try to layer up this white and gray together. But, oop, there we go. Let's not hit the microphone with the needle. Number one, I don't need to electrocute myself. And number two, I don't need to break the needle. Alright. Okay, so we will get that in there. I think that might be big enough. So we will snippy snip, and this is two colors kind of woven together, so I'm going to put them to the side so they don't end up in the wrong color bag. So a lot of people do this with the roving. Um, my budget said, no, you are not doing this with roving. So we did acrylic yarn. Um, acrylic yarn, uh, you can do the flat um, needle felting, like the, the painting with it. Um, you can use the acrylic yarn from what I've read on your 3D figures, but you're still better off having a core, an inner core of um, roving. Uh, because people say that the acrylic yarn doesn't like to stick to itself. Um, I don't know about that. I haven't tried to do one that's solid acrylic yarn. Um, I'm just going to say you might want a little bit of roving as your inner core. But um, we'll, we'll see. Maybe one day I'll, I'll attempt it without the roving. But I had some extra roving that a friend had sent to me. So, and it was of shades, it was like a heavily variegated shade, so I wasn't really sure what to do with it, so I was like, well, we can play around with it and um, see how that goes. Sorry, I'm just getting some of these bags of fluff out of the way. Alright, so we're kind of done with that color. No color contamination, please. It will vaguely show up. So since this isn't paint and we can't blend it like paint, um, we kind of have to buy the shades and kind of like blend the shades together to um, make happen what we're trying to happen. So We've got our moon in place. We've got kind of the clouds backlit behind it. Now, we're at the spot in the tutorial where we need to start putting in some of our clouds. Now, we've got two different colors for our clouds that we have um, that I pulled to the side that we might end up using. We've got this cornflowery color, and then we've got this lighter blue. And I'm not really sure which one I want to go with. We might go with both and use this one as a little bit of a highlight on here. Uh, they kind of work. Um, let's start with the darker of the light blues and see what it looks like against this. This might end up being too bright for me. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, this was just yarn from the craft store that I took a dog grooming brush to a sticker brush they call it. It kind of looks a little scary when you see it in the store. It's got all these little metal spikes coming off of it that are kind of bent at an angle. See, I should have it right here. Because I had to use it. Ugh. Too short. Can't reach. There we go. So, um, actually I need to clean it. It still has some fluff from the last color that I was um, fluffing. What color was I fluffing? It might have been the dark color. One of the dark black or blue. Um, I think it was the blue actually. So we've got, uh, so let me see if we can get a side angle on that. There we go, that's a pretty good look at it. That's what it looks like from the side. So it's got all these little army guys, you can kind of see it sticking up at an angle there towards the end. So you just take a handful of yarn, like five or six strands, whatever length you're comfortable holding and, and maneuvering, and then you just kind of brush 
one end of it and then flip it over and brush the other or you can like put it through a piece of cardboard and brush it on the cardboard. I will say it does rip up your fingers a little bit if you keep getting these repeatedly on your finger. So um, I had some some just surface scrapes. My, my skin was a little rough. Didn't make me bleed or anything but um, just keep that in mind if you have sensitive skin. I tried to do it with um, this on my finger and you can see it kind of started to shred it so I had to stop that and uh, take that off. Well, that sticker brush, I mean, it doesn't really hurt your dog, but it does get the undercoat out, so. All right, we're gonna start pulling some of this off now. I'm gonna sneak this a little bit. Now look, see how light that looks now that it's away from all of itself? So maybe this will be all right. All right, so where do we want our clouds to go? Um, and what direction do we want our clouds to go in? I'm just gonna sneak this a little bit. So I'm just gonna twist and pull get it a little bit more put together um, all right so let me see so we've got some, some cloud action happening kind of like out this way he's got his on sort of an angle sort of so uh, we'll see how that works for us I'm using a small gauge needle felting needle. Um, you do want finger protection. Um, don't try to be a badass and be like, oh, I don't need the finger protection. Y you want the finger protection. Trust me. Um, they are, are little tiny. Let's see if I can get the camera to see them. It might not see them. Let me see. I always have trouble getting it to see them. That's kind of in a shadow right there. Alright, there's little tiny... You might be able to see that. There's little tiny notches. It kind of looks like little tiny shadows on that needle, like in incremental spaces apart. There's little... I don't know if they're really barbs. It looks like notches cut into the needle to grab the fluff and, you know, shove it into the other fluff underneath of it so it'll stick. You're basically force weaving it, I guess. Um, you're punching it through into the other layers. Well, if that goes through your finger, <laughs> and it will without the, the finger covers, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, um, like if you're doing something intricate, you know, and you're stabbing here and, you know, if you don't have, I've actually gone through this a little bit, but it hasn't hurt as much. Um, but it does protect you to a degree. It keeps you from like having to go to the emergency room and have this removed from your hand. Um, cause you know, if it hurts going in one way and if it actually goes through your finger, pulling it out the other way is not going to be fun. So, um, and it's kind of thick to pull it completely out. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just keep pulling cause it, it actually, it has a hook on the end of it to keep it, it has like a little built in handle. So I have a wooden handle holder, but this is the needle outside of the holder. So it has a little L kink on the end of it, and it gets exponentially wider as it goes up. So, um, yeah, it hurts. I, I did stab myself a couple of times on my thumb when I was, oh, thank you for the follow, when I was working on the flamingo, and um, I was like, oh, I better put the thumb thing on. And uh, it definitely hurt. It, 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 was like, it was like stabbing yourself with a sewing needle, but it hurt 20 times more. Um, when I did it, but that's because I stopped the second it it went too far. Um, and I'm like, oh shit. So be very, very careful. And I do recommend the handles because these things kind of suck to hold on to. I mean, you can do it without the, the handle, but the handle's a lot more comfortable. So um, 
my handle, now I don't know how all of them work, but mine has this little wooden plug thingy. It's longer, it's wider on one end than it is on the other. So this is the narrow end, this is the wider end. So, and this also works as a, um, as a safety thing for when you're done for the day. So when you're done, um, the skinny end goes in first. Oh, careful. So you would flip this and stick the little hook thingy on the wide end when you're done. And then you would put the sharp piece in the handle and there you won't stab yourself accidentally. And then I have my little tool case that it goes in just in case this comes off. So it's all contained. So, um, and then, you know, you would just push that in so that it's, it's snug. And then when you're ready to go again, you're going to pull that out carefully. You're going to flip your little plug thingy around so that now your, your hook, your little L shape is on the skinny end. And then the skinny end goes in first and now you have a more comfortable way of holding it. She accidentally stabbed herself like five times since the holidays and everyone thinks they won't do it until they do it. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh no, I'm good. I don't need this stab. I'm like, oh. Fortunately, I stabbed myself with a single needle. I have another handle that came with this toolkit that has eight needles in it. If you're going to use the big monster handle, make sure your fingers are protected because I can't even tell you. Oh, come back here. I can't even tell you how much this would hurt going into your hand, okay? Like, I counted them. There's eight of them, them bad boys on there. Like, no, 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 no. I don't use this one this much that much because it is heavy when you start getting in there and there's always that little gap in the middle um, when I'm trying to work on stuff and I never seem to hit where I want to hit there's a reason why this one came wrapped in bubble wrap it came this way do not give this to your five-year-old sibling or or family member and be like here this shit needs adult supervision, and um, even some adults might need supervision, <laughs> so be very, very careful. This is definitely not an activity that you want to do on, like, those, um, those paint and sip parties. No, no. <laughs> No, no, you need to be completely sober for this. So, um, yeah. Please use caution. This is a sharp object. It did make me bleed. So, just, just be careful, guys, really. So this isn't too bad. I mean, it is bright. It is bright. Um, so we have the tutorial on pause down there in the corner because there's no way I can needle felt as fast as Bob paints. I couldn't paint as fast as Bob paints. So, um, and this definitely takes a lot longer to, um, to make happen than painting. At least for me. Now there might be some needle felters out there that have done this forever and they're like boop 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 done. But um, you know, we are using the most god awful bright orange background base felt square ever. Um, it just came in the pack of felt I bought and I'm like, yeah, okay. We're just gonna go with it. But um you know, we, we got the top of it covered pretty good, I think. So, now that seems to be doing all right. And that might be a little too much of an angle there. Probably is. 
All right, so let's see about, just want to fill in that gap a little bit. I know that's a cloud and there's, there's gappy guys in the clouds, but this cloud can be a little bit more solid in parts at least. And uh, I'm going to kind of take him up and off the top of this. Or at least that's the plan. I'm probably felting directly into our pad here. Yeah, I am a little bit. That's all right. That's all right. That top edge will get cleaned up a bit when we're all said and done. Now, this base piece of felt was supposed to be 9 by 12. So my marks here are to kind of give me what should have given me an 8 by 10 border. However, when I guess it finished going through the manufacturing process. This piece of this whole pack of felt was no longer 9x12. Um, <laughs> it was like 8 by something, so it didn't really give me a border on the one side. We were able to still get our border on the other. Um, so our edges are going to be a little uneven, but that can be rectified. Um, if you go to frame this, you can just get a mat put over it where it just covers up maybe just a little bit of the edge just to cover the unevenness. And then when you put it in a frame with a mat, it should be good to go. However, you might want to go with like a chunkier frame, like chunkier width on the, the edge because I don't think you can put glass with this unless you get it professionally framed. Um, cause the couple of off the shelf frames I bought that I tried to put these into, they get so thick by the time we're done, um, it was really pushing on the glass. So these might have to be framed unglassed on your own, like maybe get a chunky frame and take the glass out and then put this in there or, um, you know, get off of there or you know, uh, get it framed from a framing place, they might be able to figure out something for you. I didn't have the tools to, to comfortably make it fit. I was a little, a little nervous about forcing it because I didn't want the glass to break. So, all right, so these clouds, we can just kind of do what we want, really. I mean, they're clouds. He's kind of got like little fingery clouds happening here. So for those that didn't see the, um, the last project, our episode one that we did, sorry, I'm digging through the door, the episode one that we did from this tutorial um, this is how that came out once we got the edges all all cleaned up. Um, a little bit of our base felt sticking through on that corner there, but frame that up and that's not going to show. So yeah, this was, um, I forget what that first one was called, Mountain Retreat or something maybe. Uh, but yeah, that was from episode one in this tutorial series. So that's all acrylic yarn with a teeny bit of, of the wool roving in a couple places where I didn't have the color in the yarn that I needed. So that came out not too, not too bad. Um, I was pretty happy with how that came out because this was the first time that we tried to needle felt along with a Bob Ross tutorial. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty stiff. And look, look how thick that bad boy is. Like, 
the the light green in here that's the felt base that we used and the back is actually like twice as thick as the front it's kind of crazy so so I was saying you might not be able to do glass in the uh, frame with these but and that doesn't want to go in the drawer so we'll deal with that later um, that's gonna require me to get up and fuss with that and uh, my back hurts too much to do that right now so from from where I'm positioned so I will fuss with that later but yeah so we'll get a little bit more cloudage action happening here I've got fluff everywhere so I try to only have one color out at a time so we'll get too much of a mess happening um, now I love to burn some incense um, when I am doing art there's only a couple of scents that don't trigger migraines for me so I tend to latch on to them hard because I can't do perfume and all that stuff you all that have been around know how scent sensitive I can be um, however I would advise not to have a candle or um, or any kind of open flame around the fluff because the fluff flies through the air okay just for safety don't don't do that because um, you never know where the fluffs gonna fly I've had it stick to my shirt and not even known it and it'll be stuck to my shirt for like two hours and I'll be making dinner after stream and I'm like oh god what the hell's on my shirt and I look down and it's like a piece of green fluff I thought it was a bug and like freaked myself out so um, you know I, I found it attached to a cat one day I saw a piece of it on them I'm like how did you even get this so I mean it does air go airborne really easy um, so don't have any open flames. I have an electric uh, wax melter, so there's no open flame around it, and um, that's what I use when I'm working with this. And um, I, it's it's kind of nearby, but it's you know there's nothing to really catch on fire. And you just cloud it up till you're cloud contented. So I'm just kind of doing some stuff in here. Now this one doesn't really look like there's all that. Like it doesn't look that super bright. The ones that are right around here will probably use that other blue to kind of highlight them a little bit I also have a really bad habit of with these things on my fingers have you ever like messed up one of your fingers real bad and you had like a bunch of band-aids on it so then your finger felt a little stiff because of the way the band-aids were on that's what these kind of feel like when they're on they're, they're not like completely cut your circulation off tight they're kind of like a one-size-fits-all deal um, but they do make your finger feel stiff so I'll be like oh my fingers hurt I can't use it <laughs> so then I'll be sticking the unprotected fingers in there and I have to keep reminding myself get that finger out of there and use the other one but that could just be a, a my brain thing that's entirely possible you know I'm a little fluffy upstairs sometimes. And I am fully willing to admit that. It is nothing new. We're pretty sure with the dyslexia, I may also have a touch of AD. 
ADHD of some form. There's so many different... I don't think they do... AD, do they still do ADD? I don't know. Like, all of these things weren't... weren't really um, being diagnosed when I was growing up. You were just different. So... Like, I was apparently... I always had said that I was in special education classes. Like, they would pull me out of my regular classes. Um, like, specific ones they would choose. And I'd have to do, like, a special education um, session, I guess we'll call it. And I, like, when was that from? Maybe first or second grade? to I'm gonna say through seventh grade because eighth grade I wasn't doing it anymore they, they kicked me out of the program at seventh grade they're like oh here you're all better um <laughs> I was not all better it turns out I always said it was from my memory because that's what I was told um apparently it wasn't for my memory, or not specifically for my memory, um, my memory was part of it, or they thought it was part of it, but, uh, just started working on a void elf working man on EU, I called her Tin Tax. Oh, nice! Good luck on that working man. Um, yeah, they actually had me in there because I was dyslexic and nobody told me this my mom just like she's like oh you weren't in those for that like like within the last year she's just casually when I was like oh well you know I was in the thing for my memory she goes no you weren't I was like yeah I was she goes no no you were in that for uh for because you're dyslexic I'm like what I was like, at no point did anyone bother to make sure that I understood this. This would have made high school a shit ton easier if I had known this. But, um, you know, growing up in the 80s, they didn't really diagnose the girls that much with a bunch of stuff. It was usually always the, the boys that were diagnosed with the things the most. And it was like, because you were a girl, you weren't affected by this. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I do wonder if there's a bit of of something else going on there aside from just the dyslexic. So, um, for some reason, I guess they decided that because I was in seventh grade or something and the tests they had done, they're like, oh, you've, you're not dyslexic anymore. And they, like, kicked me out of the program at the school in seventh grade. And I'm like... Okay, but you don't just stop. <laughs> Dyslexia just doesn't go away, okay? <laughs> you may learn the skills, or you may finally acquire the skills to, um,. To work around it and to adapt to how to handle it but <laughs> when they would test me like every year the whole time I was part of these special classes for this shit at the school like they would pull me out during like my English classes like my grammar English classes I guess and I'm like, um, shouldn't, shouldn't I be there for that? Um, and, uh, that, that always kind of seemed odd to me. Like, why are you pulling me out during this? Like, I kind of need to know this stuff. Um, and they had me in all my regular classroom classes they would just pull me out for like an hour or something to, to do other stuff I kid you not the one time they made us make candles 
by taking a milk carton from the cafeteria that you know we would get with our lunches, rinsing them out, putting ice in it, sticking a wick in there, and then pouring colored wax over it. I'm like, what the fuck does this have to do with, with whatever the fuck is going on with my brain? Um, it, it really didn't. I, I don't know if we were... Like, I still don't understand what the whole point of that was. I mean, yeah, it was cool to make a craft, but um, this, this doesn't really help me. Um, but, you know, whatever, I guess. But um, they would test me once a year with, I guess, the people that were making the decisions as to whether or not I still needed this extra help, I guess. We'll, we'll air quote that. Um, I don't know. And, uh, they didn't explain a whole bunch to me while I was in school. Um, I would have to go down there to, like, the, their office was in, like, the main office. And I'd be down there for, like, two-thirds of the day. I kid you not. Like, maybe nine or ten o'clock in the morning, they would pull me down to the office. And we would sit there. And, um, they would put worksheet after worksheet after worksheet in front of me. And they're like, okay, here, do this. It was a worksheet of, like, math problems, okay? Like, an entire worksheet of, like, 25 maybe addition problems. And then they would sit there with a stopwatch in front of me, and they're like, okay, go. And I had, like, two minutes to get as much done as I could. Alright? That's a lot of pressure <laughs> for someone that, um, that is a bit anxious. Loud vehicle, sorry, our window is open and it's raining, so the traffic seems even louder. Um, th th that's a lot for someone to deal with when they're a bit anxious and nervous to begin with, and, and they like to flip numbers backwards. And then they're sitting there staring you down while you are working on this being timed. Like, what? Like, and, and then, you know, they, they would go over it and see how many you got right and how many you got done at all. And I'm just like, there's something really fucked up about this. Um, and... Gee, I wonder why I'm such a nervous person now. Um, Jesus Christ. And uh, then, after we got done a page of, of addition problems, well, then we had to do it with subtraction. Same thing. Here you go. Here's your worksheet. I'm going to time you. You've got two minutes. Go. Like, what? And then I think they would time me to see how long it took me to complete the sheet entirely outside of just like the two minute timer. And um, I, I laugh, but you know, it, I laugh at the ridiculousness of it. And then the same thing with multiplication, the same thing with division. And, and I'm just like, dear God, why? But the best part was, not only did I have to do that, I, I think they had me do a bunch of other shit too, I, I just don't remember. All I know is that whatever they had me do took all fucking day, like all fucking school day. I remember that we would stop for lunch, okay? <laughs> we stopped, went to the cafeteria, or they sent me to the cafeteria, and I went to eat, and then I had to come back, okay? <laughs> And, and then we'd like kind of started all over again. And then they would pull out these pictures of, of these geometric shapes that were made out of 
like like a square made out of inner triangles that were like green and white or something and then they had a box of these triangles in green and white that I would have to fit together to copy the picture in front of me. And I guess this kind of lets them see how my brain is, is interpreting what's where and if I'm flipping the wrong thing in the wrong spot. I can kind of understand that. Um, but <laughs> they'd show me the picture and they would time me while I'm trying to figure out how it fits together and, and how to duplicate the picture, okay? Then, they would show me the picture again, like after I did a series of these. It would kind of circle back around on itself. And there was so much pressure, at least from, from my brain. I was like, oh god, I'm gonna fuck this up, you know? Um, I think the whole point was to fuck it up so that I could get, or they could justify me getting help or something. Um, and, uh, the, the next rotation would be, okay, here's the picture. You have 15 seconds to look at it and memorize it. Now I've taken the picture away and now you need to make what you saw on the picture. I'm like, what? I was like, I need to see the picture again. And they're like, no, no, you have to do it without seeing the picture. And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, and it was just so tedious. I mean, it was these same tests, okay, from like first or second grade through seventh grade. It was the same fucking test every year to see if I still had to be in the program. And I think my day of testing would finish maybe a half an hour before the school day ended. And, and then I had to pick up all of my work that I missed for the day and, and catch up on it, which was kind of bullshit. Um, because now I have the pressure of trying to catch up when I al already had trouble and struggles maintaining where I was and keeping up with everybody else. So I'm like, really? Th this, this isn't helping me. <laughs> this is actually making it worse. <laughs> I, I, I'm still a nervous, terribly nervous test taker to this day. Now, I do have a bit of anxiety. I don't know if it all started from there. I don't know. But, like, I'm so worried about watching the clock and how much time I have left to complete the thing that I can't focus on doing the thing. Like, I'm, I'm terrible with it. It's, it's, it's crazy. And they magically decided that, um... At the end of seventh grade, I didn't need to be in this program anymore, and they, like, graduated me out of it and made a big deal about it, and I'm like, okay, you're making a big deal about graduating me out of this program. I'm still dyslexic. You didn't make it go away. <laughs> like, it doesn't go away. Um, they didn't... See, here's the thing that kind of frustrates me to a degree my own brain finally f had figured out ways to um to cope with it to a degree like they taught me touch math um when i was was younger and a lot of people like what the fuck is touch math they would draw diagrams of numbers for me and let me see if I can, I know I'm meandering here, but you know what? What the hell? Um, here we go. Here's a piece of paper. So they would draw numbers or they had like numbers printed out and they would do like a one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they would put dots on the numbers in specific points on the numbers and hang on I gotta think of where they were to help me I guess focus long enough to um, to get where I needed to go because apparently you know I, I'm not I'm not really like I'm not how, how to say this I'm not necessarily a dumb person but I struggle sometimes understanding things and getting to where I need to be and a lot of the time I feel like I'm a visual or I don't know if I'd say tangible learner but sometimes I need to touch the things in order to learn the things and, and that might sound kind of odd but so I, I know this looks dumb bear with me um, so because I was struggling so much, they're like, okay, we're going to teach you touch math. Now, Russell had never heard of this, and he looked at me like I was stupid when I'm trying to get through, you know, um, math problems and stuff. Even when I'm trying to do it in my head, I'm, I'm touching the air, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm trying to to figure this out. He goes, no, just just this and this. And I'm like, no, no, my brain doesn't work that way this is how I was taught to cope with it. Um, so one gets a circle in it and it's one. And then two, you know, there's two dots on it. So one, two, three, you know, and three gets one, two, three, four gets one, two, three, four. I would have to touch the dots on the numbers. So I'm like four, five, six, seven. Okay. So five one two three four five or one two three four five touch the circles five plus four five six seven eight nine okay this is how i had to be taught because <laughs> my brain gets so muddled um and then you know six six is a bit of a funny animal um six was was a double so you'd go one two three four five six sevens one two three four five six seven Eight was another double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then nine was the weirdest one of them all, where it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm a little slow when it comes to math because I like to flip numbers around. Um, that doesn't really help me with the flipping of the numbers because you guys have seen me um, flip numbers when I'm reading them or when I'm typing them get back to actually doing some art now because um, when I see it I'm looking at it and then when I'm trying to copy it I'll, I'll flip the digits around it doesn't help with that it just helps in getting the the math amount that I need to where it needs to be um, sometimes algebra that didn't really help me so much um, I struggled in algebra real bad but they're like oh no you're you're good now you you've graduated the program congratulations and I'm like but you guys taught me one thing to cope with the one problem but you didn't really do anything for for the other problem so it's like my brain's like okay we figured out how to cope with it in this way, in this specific instance, but they were testing me in specific ways. When they kicked me out and said I had graduated and didn't need to be in there anymore, 
they were still kind of testing me at like that 5th fifth grade level maybe it was the same tests every time that I can remember um it didn't really seem to change all that much well yeah after X a number of years of doing it you know you're gonna eventually get that drilled into your head so they kicked me out right and then I don't know 7th or 8th grade I guess it was in eighth grade. I'm sitting there and we had a history test in my history class because at that point you're changing classes in, in our school system. And um, I remember I was so nervous taking that test and I had such a hard time because I was reading the questions and none of them were making any sense to me when I was reading them. I'm like, this, we didn't learn this. Like when I was like sitting there reading them, I'm like, we, we did not learn this. This was not in the book. What, what, what is this? And I was so confused and so upset that I just, I was kind of having a meltdown while I was taking the test and I was so upset. Nothing made sense. I get the test back. And of course it was like barely passing. Like it was like three points above a D and I'm like, okay, so like it's at least a C. And then the teacher was going over the class, uh, with the class, the test verbally, out loud. And they're like, so what is the answer to this? So that, you know, those that got it right could say the answer out loud. And, um, and you know, then those that didn't get it right could, you know, mark down the right answer and try to learn from where the mistakes were made. And I had raised my hand because when he asked the question out loud I'm like oh and he asked me the answer and I was like well it's this and he walked over and looked at my test he goes why did you put that as the answer and I was completely dumbfounded I'm like I don't know and I just sat there and stared and I'm like why did I put that as the answer come to find out I was reading the questions backwards I was reading the back half of the question first and sticking that like in the beginning and then the the beginning of the question I was moving to the back so yeah my brain just found another way <laughs> like okay fine you've took my my uh, my ability to to be weird from me in this direction so I'm gonna be weird in this direction like it it was very like it it doesn't go away you just find different ways that it tends to come out and you have to find more ways to, to cope with it. And um, for the longest time, nobody actually directly told me or made sure I understood that that was what the problem was. Like, if I had known that that was what the problem was when I was in high school, because nobody, nobody mentioned it. My parents didn't mention it. Nobody at the school mentioned it. Like, everybody was just like, mm, whatever. Because, I mean, they had my school records from the other school. Because, you know, like, they had them. So, it was just so bizarre. If I had known, with the way I was struggling so bad, I would have had better ways to communicate with my teachers to be like hey I have this I'm struggling I don't know if this is why I'm struggling but I'm struggling is there anything we can do to make me be able to understand this a little bit easier because verbally you know if you're talking to me and you have my attention I mean, I, I'm not saying I didn't get bored and space out at times, but, you know, it, verbally, if you're talking to me and you're showing me and, and we're one-on-one -on -one and, and I can focus, then, you know, I, I can understand the things, but to a degree. I mean, my brain's always going to try to fuck it up somewhere, but, um, you know, it was easier. But the high school I was in was a private high school. 
it was either that or go to the sending districts because uh, we didn't have a high school of our own in our town and the sending district was um, had a reputation um, for kids that were part of the sending district getting jumped constantly in in the hallways and in getting beat up and just you know a really rough go of it and um, my brother was a cop in that town and he's like no no don't 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 do that <laughs> go to the other school but the only high school in our town was a private high school it was a private Catholic school um, and they had a very odd way of doing things um, their class levels were college prep advanced placement for like the smarty smart kids and um, and general classes however to be in the general classes your GPA had to be a certain number it didn't seem to matter if there was something else going on from what I gathered um, cause I think when I was really starting to struggle, I think my mom had tried to contact them to see about dropping me down. Because it was, th these college prep classes were, were just killing me. Uh, it was, I was taking five hours a night to get through my homework so it was like home from school change I get like an hour of decompressed time if I'm lucky and then it was straight into homework sometimes it was just change and straight into homework depending on how much homework I had and it never seemed to stop I would just be struggling like if like, and I'm like sitting there I'm like how do these kids do sports and have their their homework done around doing the things like how either they were you know there were shenanigans happening or exceptions were being made which might have been the case or or I was like there's like why why is this so hard for me but they would not drop me down they're like no no her, her GPA is not low enough. And I'm like, what? So, like, you had to be, like, a D student, a D and F student in the college prep classes in order for them to drop you down. And the one teacher's like, I'm always here after school until such time. You know, if you guys are struggling, stop by and, and we can get, you know, I can help you. I was like, okay, so the one day I finally worked up the nerve, made sure that I had time, um, arranged for my ride to pick me up like an hour later, and I was like, okay, so I'm gonna, you know, it's like, all right, cool. She's like, just stop by, and I'm like, okay. So that day after school, went to my locker, got the shit that I needed out of it, went to her class to get help and she wasn't there and I waited and I waited and I waited I must have waited like 20 minutes and she still didn't show up I have no idea where she was but she wasn't there and I'm like how can you say you're gonna be here to help people and then not show up there was no note on her door about what room she might be in the, the, there was like that she wasn't going to be able to do it that day. I don't know if there was like a faculty meeting or something or if it was just any day but that day that I had arranged my ride to pick me up late ahead of time. And I'm like, just like everything was just conspiring against me. And I'm just like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. So <laughs> it's like, this is dumb. 
but uh, I don't know. It was a weird and wild time. Growing up in the 80s and 90s. I can tell you that. But yeah, I mean, I never stopped being dyslexic. So, just have to try to apologize when I am having my dyslexic moments. You're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> my brain strikes again. I remember one time when I was working in the cash office for the craft store. Um, I, I can't remember if it was a weekend or if it was during the week and the office manager was on vacation or something. I can't remember what it was. It might have been the office manager was on vacation and I had to fill in because I was trained to do it on the weekend so she didn't have to come in. Um, we had a check encoding machine that we had to run all of the checks through to, to put um, the, the bank information for the store on it. So that when we put it through the store's bank accounts or whatever, you know, we, we got paid. Um, and you had to encode the dollar amount, like you had to type the dollar amount that was on the check into the, the machine. And there was specific ways that you had to, um, that you had to do it. And apparently I was trying to make sure that we were settled for the day, uh, for the night before, um, make sure that, you know, we had a set dollar amount, like, like we had reports that would print out how much we took in in checks for the day and, um, you know, how much credit cards were because you know the total that the computers spat out and the total that I came out with with you know all of the cash for the day and, and everything had to all mesh up they all had to be the same um like I think like the change could be slightly off but the dollar had to be there and I'm like sitting there and my check totals between what the computer was saying I was supposed to have and what I physically came up with were, were different by five cents. And I was like, what in the holy hell is this shit? Um, I, I was looking and looking and looking. I could not fucking find it because, you know, once you, you make the mistake a lot of the times for me I couldn't unsee the mistake like the mistake was looking the same like it looked correct I wasn't seeing it and I was about having a meltdown because you know clock's ticking armored car's gonna be there to pick up the deposit and the one the acting store manager that was there he's like you're still not done yet I'm like I'm off and I can't find it so one of the other girls that sometimes did cash office came in and she found it in like five seconds she's like you've got 50 cents and it should be five cents and I'm like what so she she helped me correct that because at that point my nerves were shot and I'm like Ugh. and so <laughs> she's like it's okay it's like I was almost in fucking tears I'm like why can't I fucking find this and um, she's like, it's alright, we got it. It's all good. Just So she helped me um, get the rest of all of the deposit stuff settled. And um, just as the store manager was signing off on the deposit, her car wa walked in. And I'm like, oh, thank God, that's done. And then I had to go do the other office manager-y shit for the day that I was assigned to do. before if I was done early then I would be on register but it was it was quite a nerve-wracking experience Ugh. did not enjoy that
so but now I've got things to kind of help me because like I do a lot of writing for uh, the WoW Challenges website now um, and uh, I know that sounds like an odd thing for someone that um, has trouble with word flipping and letter flipping and everything to do but it's not so bad most of the time um, it does take me a while to get stuff done because a lot of times when I'm trying to type stuff out my thoughts get jumbled and it's it, like it's kind of weird because I'm I'm trying to word and then I'm like no no that that's half ass backwards and and I'm trying to fix the wording order so I will have a sentence typed out with like 20 different words in there as my brain is like trying to adjust for for the way I'm trying to phrase something and then I have to you know then I'm, then I'm mad when I go back and read it I'm like what the hell am I trying to say and so then I have to you know go back in delete everything out so it does take me a little bit longer I mean I can get through it but I also have um, I also have uh, Grammarly downloaded the free version um, I mostly not gonna lie Grammarly doesn't like the way I type. So you were working in a second hand store for a short while for the cash and we just had a, a we just had a glass filled with coins under the table to add or subtract the, the missing balance. Yeah, yeah, um like apparently the way they did it at the craft store was during the week um as long as the cash total was within ten dollars of where the report printout was per register it was fine apparently because the office manager was like that ten dollars could be like uh, like in coin it could be a roll of quarters that they just bought that are sitting in the drawer or you know dimes and, and nickels or whatever um at the end of the week she um or yeah like when the week ended so I was always settling for the day before so when I came in Saturday morning I was settling the registers for Friday night and then Sunday morning when I did it I was settling for Saturday um, so when she came in Monday morning she was settling for Sunday and she had to settle for the whole week and then she would count the coins in in the registers and sometimes you know she would probably you know make slight adjustments there and we always had to have a specific dollar amount that was kept in our safe and um and and all that and it, it got a little complicated at times because I was not good at ordering change I hated it I absolutely hated it um I don't know like I don't know um if if you guys so, some retail companies um, use armored car service to come and pick up their deposits for the bank, right? So um, they would pick up at specific times. Well, not specific times, but usually by X time of day, they would be there um, to, to pick up. It was never the exact same time every day because, you know, safety and all that. But um, we ordered change from armored car. And they would bring it to us so nobody had to go to the bank because nobody had time to go to the bank because the store was always you know super super busy so to order change from the armored car company they had this automated system that you had to type in dollar amounts for of how much you wanted of each of each um, coinage breakdown because of the format they wanted it done in and my brain I just I couldn't handle that and and I I told the office manager I said look I'm not comfortable 
ordering the change I can never get it right I don't know what it is she tried to show me like four times and I'm like I can't so she always made sure that she had ordered change uh, before she left on vacation um, if she was leaving me to um, to kind of um, do the minor things that she would do like like settle the the registers for for the day before um, so she would try to make sure that we had extra coin for the week because for her it was no big deal but for me it's like the pressure of the automated system and then they're like has to be done in like whole dollars or something and, and I'm like what <laughs> and, and like it, it just my, my brain's just like nope I'm out but <laughs> it was just such such a an anxiety inducing experience that I did not enjoy it whatsoever so you're glad to be on the buying end instead of selling these days you don't handle cash at work and we pay everything through bank transfer I hate dealing with cash the last time I dealt with cash was the craft store because when I left the craft store I went to the casino um, and the department, I know it sounds kind of dumb, you worked in the casino and you didn't handle cash? No, I didn't. <laughs> and I was very, 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 very glad for that because I probably would have been fired in a week because of my stupid brain. Um, and, and it's dyslexic tendencies. Um, cause they're, they're, cause you don't steal from the casino no matter how much you think they'll never know, they know. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because then you have to go upstairs with security at the end of your shift when they're settling your drawer. If you're like $10 off, they're like, where's the 10 bucks? So, I mean, don't even try it. I've seen things, you guys. I've seen things. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I didn't handle cash at the casino. The department I was in didn't touch money. Um, I was in the, the credit department there um, and we just signed people up and did uh, for in-house lines of credit so um, I did paperwork all day um, I would call banks I would call other casinos I would run credit reports on people I I would set up files for them um, I didn't make decisions on whether or not they were going to get credit. They tried to talk me into doing that. However, it, it was definitely a pay increase, but it would only be a pay increase for the days that I was sitting on the executive decision desk. Um, there was, there was a specific name for for that position when you're shit I don't remember what it was was it a dual key we had to be licensed to work in this department we had to go through rigorous background check um, the background check I had to fill out to get this license was about Ugh. the base of it was about five to ten pages long but then once you put in all the information they requested it got to be almost like 15 pages long um and they check <laughs> the state of new jersey which is where i was where i got my casino license um th those fuckers check <laughs> any work history because I was working around large sums of money and dealing with people's financial um, financial records like their social security numbers their bank accounts and stuff I I saw that I had their routing numbers I, I, I had access to all of it they had to make sure that we were um, that we weren't lying about anything on our work history or our backgrounds you know they needed to make sure that that there was no um 
no unsavory activity in our past that could potentially affect um, the financial records and whatnot of other people for, um, you know, make sure that we're not the steely type and, and all that. And, you know, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I would want somebody to be heavily background checked if I didn't know them from Tom, Dick, or Harry and they had my bank information. So, because it wasn't like just your debit card number. Oh no, we had the routing number, we had the checking account number, sometimes we had a copy of your check. So, you know, and the social security numbers, like, they wanted to make sure that, you know, we were, we were okay. That we weren't going to do anything stupid. Um, so, I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, next to work, I manage the, the town campsite, and I hate when people try to pay me in cash. I'm not responsible for that. Yeah, um, so we did, we handled paperwork in, in our department. That That's what we did. We weren't allowed to touch money. If somebody tried to pay off what they owed to the casino on their, their lines of credit, we had to tell them to go to the cashier. Um... And, and, uh, yeah, I wasn't really comfortable with the stuff that I had access to. I'm like, this is, this is weird and I don't like it. Um, I hated working there. I absolutely hated it. But I needed insurance and the craft store wasn't offering insurance. And, um, the craft store was, how to put this? Um, I liked working there to a degree. It was a love-loathe relationship work-wise. Um, I liked being around the crafty things. And I liked learning, um, you know, from the department merchandisers who, um, you know, I got to know my coworkers and stuff. Um, cause I, I liked to learn from them, well, what, what is what is this for? What do you do with this? And um, I liked talking to the classroom coordinator because she did a lot of the display pieces that we had up for ideas of what people can do with shit and, and stuff. You know, I just, I liked, I liked p picking people's brains and like, what are, what do you make with this? You know, I, I enjoyed that. Um, I, as stressful as merchandising was, I didn't mind it that much. What I did mind was being first called a register in a department when I got more freight than someone else that day and I was always first call because my department was small. But when I was merchandising, I was merchandising the kids craft section and there were days that the store was so slammed I couldn't even get my ordering done much less get the freight put up and you know I'd be trying to get to lunch and I I was last to go to lunch and first call to register which always kind of burned my ass because by time I got back from lunch you know there were supposed to be other cashiers in at that point I was still getting called like every five minutes and we had to have orders done by a certain time and then I'm trying to go to lunch and the store manager's flipping out on me. Why do you still have all this freight on the floor? And I'm like, have you not been hearing me being called to register every time I walk off of it? Like you have cameras up there. You can see I'm eff effing up there. Like listen, every time I walk off register, I step foot back in the department, touch one box barely get it open and they're calling me back up. I haven't had time to do X, Y, and Z. That's why there are still boxes on the back of the aisles. I will stay late and do it then if you want me to. And they're like, no, no overtime. I'm like, well, then you need to get me off register and tell them to stop calling me for a while so I can get the things done or someone has to do it for me. Those are the options today. Like, <laughs> like, you're not going to get both because my department was in the back corner of the store. So every time they called me up front, I can't tell you how many miles I walked in a day. Um, during fourth quarter when I was merchandising, I think I was averaging like three to four miles a day because I'd walk up front, 
I'd do the thing. I'd be up there for like two customers. I'm like, why the fuck did you call me up here for two customers? And I walk to the back, set my foot on the edge of the department, not even to the where my, my freight is sitting waiting for me to put up. Set my foot on the edge of the department and I'm being called back up again. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, and I didn't mind it so much, but I did mind that the woman who was running the front end at that time, all she did was fucking run her mouth <laughs> at the, at the, um, at customer service. And, and she would just, she would just talk and talk and talk and talk. And I understand, you know, talking to be friendly to customers. That's one thing. But when you get into a 20 minute conversation with one customer and you've got 10 people behind you in line that all need returns and you're paging me up to open another register because your other cashier that's up front is running her mouth with the one customer and the one customer looks like they want to chew their arm off to get away. That's not a me problem. That That's a you problem. And, and you need to get to work. Um, there, there's being friendly and, and, and getting people through the line. Like if there's nobody up there, I don't really care. But if you're going to sit there and BS, and there was a store rule that no more than three people in a line and you had to page somebody up to open. One day, I kid you not, I got called up there three times in a row. And every time I got up there, there was one person in line. I was like, what are you doing? I'm trying to get shit done. Do you need me or not? And she's like, oh, well, the line was longer. I'm like... I'm like, yeah, they probably got out of line because you wouldn't shut up. But, um... Like, I, I preferred merchandising much better than running front end. Because I had to run front end for three years. Um, I, I fucked up a life choice. And, um, if I had it to do it, do it again, I would not have made the choice that I did. Um... It, it was it was a shitty situation and I felt I felt mentally I had to remove myself from the situation so I, I moved out um, thinking things would would be better and I moved in with a friend that was begging me to move in with her except she lived in a different state so I had to transfer stores and if we had lived closer to that store I probably would have stuck it out um, but we didn't, it wasn't like within walking distance or anything. So, um, I had a falling out with the friend who was kind of treating me as a doormat and I, I snapped between the shit going on at the new, at the new store where I was now working at and, um, oh, that's really bright on the camera. Um, and, uh, it was, it was just dumb. Long story short, I ended up coming back to the original store because the original store found out that I had moved back and I wasn't in, um, the other state any longer and they wanted me back except they wanted me on front end and I'm like, I can't merchandise. They're like, no, that position's full. And I was like, oh, all right. So I, I hated running register. I hated being stuck on register. I'm, I'm a nervous little bundle of nerves when I have to handle money. I'm not comfortable handing money, handling money. And, um, and then factor in that we had um, teenagers working there. And the teenagers, you know, you need to have working papers if you're a teenager, and child labor laws are a thing here. Um, don't know where everybody's all from, but uh, they they are a thing here. Where's? Sorry, I'm trying to find something. I had it. Where?
I think the husband took it. What did he do? I had something on my desk. And I think the husband took it. Because now I don't see it. Or I misplaced it. Oh, it's up there. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, uh, the minors, if you were under, actually, if you were under 18, um, you had to follow the child labor laws. <laughs> so, those of us that were running the front end had to know who was working that, um, was under 18 on all of the shifts, what their, sh what their shift time was, so that we could um, work out their breaks accordingly. Because um, technically, the miners had to have a half an hour break off the clock. Oh, you'll need a child certificate soon. We're getting a new law that requires that, which is great. Nice. Um, and you know, and, and I, I'm totally fine with there being restrictions on times, you know, for how long that the kids can work and all, you know, cause they're not an adult. They've got their own schoolwork and shit that that's more important than this part-time job. And, um, you know, I'm totally fine with that. And, and that's, that's, that's fantastic and fine. And, and the kids did help out a lot of the gaps that we had cause it's really hard to get adults to put up with the amount of shit that we had to deal with on a daily basis in there. Um, uh, one or two of the managers weren't that great to, to deal with. Um, the, the first store manager that I personally dealt with while I was merchandising and later um, was he still store manager at that time? Or had he been moved up to district? I don't. I can't remember if he was still store manager when I was working front end, or if he had been moved up to district manager, and the other full was uh, store manager at that point. But um, the second store manager that that I had to deal with, um, that got moved up to store manager in there, he was a little better than the first one. Um, they, they both had some, some anger management issues. Um, the one made me super nervous and uncomfortable, um, when, when they started to, to yell cause they yelled and they had, um, they had a violent tendency when they got upset or got news that they didn't like um very triggering for some people um i know i wasn't a fan i wasn't in the office the the day this happened um but w the the girl that helped me with um with the cash office sometimes who did it before they trained me to do it um, she had been in the office. I think she was on the phone with a vendor trying to check on an order to figure out where the hell it was if we were getting the thing that was out of stock if they were if it was discontinued you know why why is this not coming in um, and I think she was trying to find out what the story was on that and while she was on the phone call with the vendor um, something happened and I don't know if store manager number one didn't like the sales report or um, was pissed off that an order hadn't shown up or something that we had two day aired in or something, something pissed him off. And I don't know what it was cause I wasn't there at the beginning of it happening. And, um, she came flying out of the office shaking and Apparently she had had an abusive ex and um, the store manager got mad about whatever had happened on the phone and he picked up the phone and threw it across the office and it hit the wall 
and shattered from, from my understanding. Uh, I don't know I don't know if it shattered into pieces or if it just hit the wall and got a little banged up. I, I don't know the exact details, just that I was told that it was hit the wall, went flying, and I was like, oh god. Okay. That was one I didn't personally witness. I did witness this, another incident though where um, we had just finished a meeting at the front of the store. Uh, we had a vendor show um, that was supposed to start that day? The next day? I think it was supposed to start the next day. I think it went Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and our meetings were on Tuesday. So, um, the store I was in was the poster child for the chain. So whenever there was, like, they tried to have the vendor shows at the Atlantic City Convention Center. Um, and they would pay, the store would pay, like, the, the chain would have some of the, the, the main office representatives over at the convention. And they paid for shuttles that they hired for the day to bus the vendors over to the store. And let them walk through the store to see their products on the shelves and how we're displaying them and the store had to be picture perfect everything in its place everything clean do you know how the fuck hard that is when you've got customers in and out of the store because we were open for regular business hours you know we had to be on top of the lines it, it, those days were hell um so <laughs> right before The, like the day before the show was supposed to happen we had um i don't even know if they still make them they probably do we called them pot perchers and i know that sounds really bizarre they were these little tiny figurines that were i don't know ceramic i guess L little, little thingies maybe maybe yay big and they would be in the shapes of birds or um or I don't know, like mushrooms or flowers or or, or, or stuff like little bunnies or and, and shit that had a little um a, like a little U shape on their feet at the bottom of them. They weren't flat. They had like a little it just looked like an upside down U. Okay, um, kind of kind of like an upside down U attached to their feet, kind of like in that shape. And it would sit on the top edge of, of a terracotta pot. So this would, like, it would sit on the edge and that would kind of stabilize it and hold it on the edge. So it would look like you had a butterfly or, or a bird sitting on the edge of your clay pot or your vase or whatever. Um, we had a table display in the main aisle as you walked further into the store. Um, oh, it's thundering. And, um... You know, little tiny things. They they weren't that much money. They they were they were okay. Some of them were cute. They, they were pain in the ass to to, to wrap and to scan because this the scan bars were so tiny on them, um, and they would constantly fall off and stuff. But you know, they they were all right. Um, <laughs> the table was a little light in what was on display. Apparently, the company was kind of a pain in the ass for shipping. And can you shut that window a little bit further? Because it sounds like it's starting to thunder. Very lightly, yes. Um, and, you know, we had this show coming the next day. We, he had us, um, this was when I was still merchandising. He had us on the, f the phone pretty much constantly with every single outside vendor that we had. If it didn't come through our warehouse and it came through like UPS or FedEx when we ordered, um, he had us on the phone calling all of them and telling us to, to two-day air whatever outstanding orders we had. Um, some of the companies were like, okay. Some of the companies were like, um, you're not authorized to do that. We have it in our computer that you can't. So we would tell the store manager. Sometimes he would get on and give them shits. And other times he was like, fine, whatever. 
Um, because we couldn't have any holes in the shelves. And, uh, no missing merchandise. And, um, the, the girl that, the lady that took care of those had called, had them, told them to two day ship it. They were gonna. They said they were gonna. He was nervously awaiting that order to show up. And while we were in our meeting, well, getting back to the story, um, we're getting there, guys, I promise. While we were in our meeting, FedEx had shown up. So one of the assistant managers went to unload the truck. And so since we were in the meeting and the store wasn't open yet, uh, he got on the PA and said, um, you know, how many boxes there were that came in through FedEx and that that company, that company's order wasn't there. It wasn't on the truck. Well, <laughs> he was like seething that it wasn't there. You know, fair enough. We just shelled out money for two day ship and it wasn't there. Two day shipping on heavy shit is expensive. So he's got in the back of his mind where he just authorized this, spent all this extra money, our, our store budget's going to be, you know, out of control for this, so it's going to come back onto him, why did you spend this much money, and then it not to be there. I understand that's, that's terribly stressful and upsetting. However, what wasn't okay was as he got close to or came up next to the table display of a bunch of clay pots with these little figurines that we were waiting on the order for displayed on them that seemed to break if you sneezed at them wrong. He walked right up to them, took his arm out, and went BAM! right across the table and sideswiped it. scared the shit out of all of us all of us were deeply rattled and upset because we're like oh fuck this is how the day is gonna go and um the doors just opened we now have broken clay pots all over the floor of the main aisle these little tiny figurines broken all over the floor and the, the lady who ran the department, she was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Because now we just turned a bad situation worse by breaking a third of what we did have in the store. So she's like, oh my god, oh my god. So um, she's scrambling to try to get that cleaned up. And, and then she's trying to figure out how the fuck she's going to fix this display um, to make it look better. And I think she, we had extra clay pots that we pulled off the shelf side and we were trying to replace those. And there's like three of us scrambling to help her. Um, and, uh, oh, it was, it was a whole thing. And we were just like, oh my God. Uh, so he was not pleasant to deal with by any stretch of the imagination at all. I was quite glad when he got moved to district manager because that meant I did not have to deal with him on the daily. The other one was a little angry, um, but nothing, nothing like that. Like he would get mad and get pissy, but he, he never had any, well, not that I saw. Um, but, I don't know, th those angry outbursts always were terribly upsetting to all of us that had to deal with him when he was like that. Because, you know, then there was the whole... Uh, how do how do I pronounce this word? Tri Tridepation? I don't know how to say it. Um, uncertainty about whether or not <laughs> we could... Um, Tridibation? I know I'm not pronouncing it right. I don't pronounce words right. Um, th there was always this uncertainty of 
I need something out of the office. The office door is shut. Because he's in a pissy mood. Because customers could just stick their head into our office. If somebody was sitting there and they... They couldn't find anybody else. Um... And it's like, uh, I, I need, I need to order, I need the, the scanny thingy to, to go do my orders. Can I, can someone get me a scanny thingy? Cause I don't know if I can go in the office. Like all of us were petrified to walk in there when the door was shut. Cause we didn't know if he was on a conference call or, or what, um, you know, it was, it was always terribly upsetting. But then there was an incident where the store got robbed and then they had to start keeping the office door closed at all times. So, although I don't think that door closed at all times really would have made a difference because there was another inner office in the main office that was always locked. And, um, like, I never had keys to it even though I worked in that back office at times. I always had to have someone let me in. And then, you know, we had to institute the rule where, where cash office had to be shut at all times. Um, but the robbery happened long after I had left. To be perfectly honest, I was surprised it happened hadn't happened before then. Because, um, uh, you know, the way things were, were done, I was just surprised. But, uh, no, no. Like, I didn't mind working there, but some of my coworkers just pissed me the fuck off. And I did not want to work with them anymore. Because they got away with so much shit where I knew if I had done that, I would have been fired. Like, I couldn't even understand how they had the balls to do it. Um, this one lady worked there forever. She was okay, but... She was another one that loved to gab constantly and would do anything she could to not be on a register, even though she was a fellow front end supervisor. So, oh, well, I, do you know where this is? You know, we're, we're supposed to get somebody to come up and show them where it is. We're not supposed to leave register. She's like, oh, well, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll show you where that is. And then, you know, she'd be gone for 25 minutes because she's back there talking to them. And then this person has her and then like, oh, well, what about this? Oh, well, what about that? And then like five other people are asking her, oh, well, where is it? Supposedly I wasn't back there. We're supposed to hand them off to a floor person. That That's the way it's supposed to go because we're supposed to be up front. Um, you know, and I'm supposed to have all of my cashiers that aren't on break on a register before I page someone else up. And, and you know, I'm like paging her to come up. I'm like, I need you. Where the fuck are you? And then I have to start paging floor people. And well, then the manager comes up. Well, why are you paging floor people? Where's so-and-so? You tell me. She said she had to go to the bathroom and well, on her way back, she was going to show somebody where something was. And I haven't seen her since. And that was like a half an hour ago. I'm not going to cover for your ass. If I'm drowning up front and you knew you were doing something you weren't supposed to be, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you just don't deal with people like that. You'll walk out if your boss starts acting like a dick, but generally people are very appreciative towards, towards you and your work. Like, it was very unsettling, but it was the only job I had at the time and he chewed me out for something in front when I was working on front end um, the, the, the anger management issue one um, in front of everyone customers other cashiers he, he chewed me the fuck out maybe I deserved it to a degree but it was extremely humiliating and embarrassing. And um, I was having a bad day. I, I had felt sick most of the day. I had been in early. They, they asked me to come in at 
Oh my gosh, what time did I come in that day? I think I came in at 7 that day to help with the trucks. Um, to help unload trucks and try to get the freight off the floor as fast as possible. And a lot of the times they were like, no overtime, but we were scheduled for like... Um, there, there was like a three hour window between full time, like bef between overtime and, um, and what was considered full time there. And so I was always last to go to lunch on my side of the store for some unfucking known reason. And I will never know why. Because the lady that went first, sometimes she came in at 7. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. The, the next lady on that side of the store, she didn't come in until 10. But she went to lunch second. And I wasn't allowed to go until like 1.30. Or, or 1 o'clock or something. Um... Let's see, she went at 12, she went at 12.30. I was supposed to go at 1, okay? However, because lunches were happening, and it was busy because people were running in on their lunch break to get their craft supplies, I was usually on register at 1 o'clock. Usually. Sometimes it wasn't busy and I could go to lunch at 1 o'clock. And, you know, that's a long time between coming in at 7 and not getting to go to, to eat anything until 1. Because uh, I had a hard time eating before I left for work in the morning. I'm not one of those people that can get up and eat. I, I can't. It, it tastes like, like paper or something in my mouth. I just, I can't do it. I have to be awake a little bit. Um, and even then I still had trouble eating right away like I usually couldn't eat for like an hour or two after I wake up and by then I'm already have to be at work so like I would try to stick something small in my face that I felt I could stomach on my way in like a, a granola bar or something but that's only going to get you so far um, most of the time I was in at nine but you know when you're hungry and you're not feeling well and the, the hungry is starting to make you feel worse. Um, it's, it's not fun. And I was mad. I was really mad because they were holding me until this, this lady that I just talked about, who was, you know, a front end supervisor. This is when I was still merchandising. Um, they were holding me for lunch until she got there. Like, I could not get off register. Like, every time I turned my light off to get off, it, it, the, the lines were just crazy. And I'm like, guys, I have to go to lunch. I need to eat. Like, 15-minute breaks are going to be starting soon. So I turned my light off to go to lunch. Now, the lady that came back did not get on register to relieve me, which you would think she would do, the, the lady from my side of the store, um, you know, you would think that she would get on so that I could get off and go to lunch. No, no. She signed back in and went back to her department. Um, and I'm like, hello? Yeah, you all got to go eat and I'm just thrown to the wolves. Nobody gave a shit. And I was pissed. And I turned my light off and the the person on customer service they're like your lights off i said i know my light is off i'm trying to go to lunch i haven't been to lunch yet and they're like oh so people kept getting in my line people wouldn't get out of my line um and i and i said to them i said where is so and so i was getting so mad i, I yelled over to to, to customer service because my, my register was right next to theirs and I'm like hey where's so and so I'm like I need to eat I need to get off of here and um because at this point it was almost 2 o'clock and I'm like y'all 
I'm only here till five. Like, 15 minute break start at three. I need to go eat and I have to get my orders done before three o'clock. And um, I was like, where is she? And, and they're like, oh, we don't know. She's running late or something. And I was like, I said something. I'm like, it, it figures. Or she, she's always late. And the store manager, I guess, had walked up and heard me and and like started ripping me a new one. I had no idea what the situation was going on, but just started ripping into me for for being mad and, and about where where this person was. And I'm like, really? So they ripped into me so hard. I'm like trying not to cry in front of everybody. He finally got me off of register. And I I didn't even leave to go to lunch because I knew if I had walked out to go to lunch, I wouldn't walk back in the building. I, I, I was that humiliated. And um, I was just sitting there. And at that point, I was so upset I couldn't even eat. I, th that's how upset I was. I was like, really? I think I got a bag of chips out of the vending machine and, and even then I was having a hard time just eating that. I'm like, why is this being such a bad day? And it was, he was not easy to deal with. So I was definitely glad when he got moved to district so that I did not have to deal with him in my face all of the time. Especially when I got moved over to front end. And even working on front end, you know, I was being walked all over by the store, too. It was crazy. They made me front head. A th I was one of their few competent people up there that could get shit done in a timely manner, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and I was also youngest second youngest at the time I was the youngest front end person up there um, and I'm like Th this is dumb and they decided oh well you're gonna be front head, head supervisor I was like oh okay I said does that come with a pay raise no No pay increase. Okay. So you're just making up titles now. Sure. So that kind of miffed me a bit. Then, as time was going on, I did get, I think, a dollar raise when I started doing cash office on the weekends. Um, but then it was decided that I was going to be the only one on front end to train managers in training. I know that sounds bizarre. We were a training store. So um, all of those training to be in management that came through there um, had to be trained on how to do front end, you know, returns, handle the registers on a whole because there were times where the managers had to run register. Um, if we were that slant, like they had to know how to do the things, um, they might not do them often, but they had to know how to do it. And it got to the point where she, the, the office manager was like, well, you're the only one that's going to be allowed to, to train the other managers that are coming through here. And I'm like, oh, yay. It was not a pleasant experience training them because a lot of them thought that they were going into management and learning how to do front end was beneath them. So that was always fun. And, uh, <laughs> oh my. And um, I said, well, do I get a pay increase for that? No. Okay. Sure. I was making 9.50 an hour running uh, doing cash office on the weekends every so often throughout the year doing um, 
some of the office manager work that they were able to have me do. It wasn't much. Um, it was basically settling the registers like I did on the weekend and then um, writing up the list of damaged merchandise that was returned because it was broken or stuff that fell off the shelf that was broken or stuff that had been stolen. And, you know, I had to I had to add that to the, the list that we had for for the month, which involved scanning it and, and writing up how, what everything was and, and like the barcodes. And then after I did that, because I had to do that in a separate location so that it could be thrown out, um, and then I had to go into the office and type it all up, um, you know, and, and, and running front end and being this supposed head front end supervisor and, and when one of the assistant managers in particular was working at night after the store manager left for the day, I had to play assistant manager to a degree. Because he would be outside smoking cigarettes, like, like a chimney. <laughs> like, half of the shift, I'm like, in there paging him, he snuck out the door and I didn't see him. And I'm like, manager's in the front, manager's in the front, and then I'm like, saying his name, and I'm like... And then I looked up, Momo, do you have to potty? Momo's a girl. But it's lightning out, buddy. Or is Zuzu sitting on him? It, it's lightning, buddy. It was thundering. He would start to to get. <laughs> if you go quick, because I think it maybe the thunder moved on, but there still may be lightning in the area. I know, right? He would start wanting to go out now. Sorry, that's a whole nother story with the dock, but um, but yeah, nine fifty an hour. And it, it, it should, to be perfectly honest, for the amount of shit that I had to do, I had to do sales reports every hour for, for the managers coming up. I, I had to, uh, I was basically a front end manager at, at that point. Um, you know, dealing with returns, uh, dealing with purchase orders coming through for, for companies and dealing with the other problems at the registers that the kids had, running the kids change, making sure that the kids were out for their allotted time. Uh, calling them up to go on their breaks, making sure that they took their 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 actual amount of break time. We had to move them to a 45 minute break because they were punching in one minute early because we were so slammed, which was so sweet of them. But it got us a fine because they weren't out for a full 30 minutes. We had to change their, their break times to 45 minutes when they were there all day on the weekend. Because um, they didn't understand that they couldn't punch back in a minute early. Like it was that that strict that that one minute was was a problem um even though they were doing it of their own own good nature and free will um but uh like all of the shit i had to do and then there were times at night where we didn't have a stock person on on duty so not only did i have to help the managers pull tills at the end of the night because i worked closing shift um there were nights where I had to clean the bathrooms too. Um, real quick, if if there was two of us up front, then I was in the back cleaning the bathrooms. Because um, if it was only one manager on, and then they pulled the the cash tills, then we had to pull all the paperwork out from underneath the registers, get that all bagged up, sweep out all the registers, wipe all the counters down, make sure the returns were sent back. You know what returns weren't sent back were were brought up, and everything was nice and orderly and everything. That was at least at least minimum like eleven dollars an hour it really should have been fifteen dollars an hour but that would have never happened in that environment but that's a lot and then you've got you know angry customers screaming at you all day about well this didn't work and, and i want to return this and we had an interesting return policy the return policy was posted in the store right as you walk out the door. Um, I, it wasn't on the back of the receipts. It probably should have been, but I don't think we had the register equipment at the time to do it. Like, our, our registers just weren't set up for that. Um, our registers were pretty, pretty badly abused. Um, 
they, they like we were always stealing parts off of one register um, to try to make the other registers keep functioning until we could get a part in from our, our warehouse or or what have you um, and like if you had the receipt fine no problem it will be returned how it was paid for. If you paid in cash, then you got the cash. If you put it on a card, then you're gonna get the it back on your card. You know, not not rocket science here. Um, however, if you did not have the receipt, we gave it back to you at the lowest sale price that it was most likely ever at, which or, or like we give your money back at at the discount. Uh, People used 40 off coupons like they were water, um, so usually lowest price on an item without the receipt was 40% off because of the coupons. So if you didn't have your receipt, you were not going to get one over on us, you were getting the item back at 40% off. It's just the way it was. That was the store policy. Uh, some people, oh, and you would not get the cash back, it would go on a gift card. Um, so that way, at least the money stayed within the, the system and you could turn around and get something else. If it was, if you just wanted a simple exchange, then whatever. If we still had the item, you could swap it with the thing that worked or if you needed a different color. That, that was fine. Um, but they were very strict where if there was no receipt, it was going on a gift card. Because, you know, we don't know if somebody just walked in and picked up an item and was like, yeah, I don't have the receipt for this, I need to return it. No, no, no. It don't work like that. Or at least it didn't work like that. Um, but, uh, it was, it was wild working in there. And uh, I, I liked it to a degree, but I didn't, towards the end, I really didn't like the attitudes uh, of some of the coworkers that I had to deal with on the daily. Um, when the officer met when the office manager found out I was leaving I didn't tell her I was leaving yet because I was waiting to see if my license got approved for the casino because there was no point in getting everyone kerfluffled that I might be leaving soon at the craft store if I didn't have my casino license approved and I had no idea how long it was going to take it could take a month it could take two months depending on how long the background check went and um so I didn't say anything to them yet because I was planning on doing my two weeks notice, you know, so it's not really that big of a deal, right? Two weeks notice as a courtesy. And I didn't have to give two weeks. It wasn't stipulated anywhere in my paperwork that I had to. It's just, you know, generally that, that was what you did. And um, just tacking down some of these loose ends in here. And, uh, apparently when they were doing my work history background check, they called the store and were asking questions. So that day when I came in and she saw me, oh my God, oh, you would have thought that I had stolen from the store. She was all in my face and snarling and, and angry. And she's like, why didn't you tell me you were looking for another job? And I'm like, or, or why didn't you tell me you were getting another job or something? And I was like, because I didn't know if it was going to be approved. I, if, like, I had to apply for the license. If I don't get the license, then I can't take the job at the casino. In which case, my ass ain't going anywhere. I'm still going to be here. So why... Why get everybody all upset if, if it may not happen? You know, that was my sort of, of thing. I don't want to prepare people and get them in the mindset that I'm leaving if, if it turns out I'm not. You know, it, it didn't seem worth the mental anguish to me at the time. It just didn't. And, um, because I looked at her because I was like, well, how did you know anyway? And she's like, oh, they called here asking questions. And I was like, oh, yeah, I have to have a background check. And she's like, well, why are you leaving? I was like, because I need insurance. And they're going to offer me insurance if I get my background check passed through. Because 
Because there were some things with my, my family, one of my siblings, that um, I wasn't sure if that was going to prevent me from getting approved. Um, one of my siblings was not a saint by any stretch of the imagination and um, was in and out of jail constantly um, and had uh, ended up in state prison for for breaking into a VFW post and um, stealing their safe because he was trying to get the money out of it. If there was money in there, there probably wasn't. I don't know, but I guess he thought there was um, so that he could go and uh, get drugs. So, um, you know, I had nothing to do with it. I only found out after the fact and uh, he had been arrested. Um, but, you know, I had to be upfront about that and I didn't know if they would be like, oh no, we're not giving you a, a license. We were half siblings, like, we didn't really see each other all that often as time went on. So, um, you know, I wasn't gonna get the one employment place all in a tizzy about, oh yeah, I'm, I might be leaving soon. But they ended up approving me for the license, and so in which case I put my official two week notice in, and she didn't speak to me. For the remainder of my two weeks, she just, she like cold glared at me and was just, I'm like, wow, like, holy shit, woman. Like, you guys treat me like shit. You don't pay me what I feel like I should be getting, getting paid. Now, disclaimer, I did have to take a 50 cent pay, pay rate, pay rate cut when I went to the casino because I was just starting and they couldn't justify giving somebody, um, 9.50 that wasn't trained and didn't know what they were doing over there. Fair enough. Fair enough. But at least they were willing to start me at 9 instead of like 7.25. Because I think 7.25 was what I started at when I first started at the craft store. And I worked there about 6 years all said and done. Um, I just... I couldn't understand why she was so angry. Like outright angry with me unless she was just mad about the fact that she was going to have to come in on the weekends. But she could have gotten the other lady to come in on, on the weekends like she used to. So I was just like, why are we so livid with me? Um, you know, y you had to know I wasn't going to stay here forever. I mean, you know, like, I, I didn't understand what, what the deal was there. Like, they had even tried to get me to go for management at one point for, for the for the store, for the chain. It wouldn't have, I would not have stayed in that location. Um, which was one of the reasons why I said no. Cause they were telling me I was going to have to go to South Carolina to train. And I'm like, well, I don't drive. So I don't know how that's going to happen. Um, and, uh, I'm like that's going to be a bit of a problem. And, um, then they could send me anywhere on the Eastern seaboard where, where the stores were located and, and shove me there and be like, okay, you work here now. And I'm like, um, that did not appeal whatsoever. So I'm like, yeah, no, I, I, that's okay. And they could like say, okay, you know what? We've decided we need you here now. And they could pick you and up and move you after like six months to a year or whenever they decided that you needed to be in another location as either an assistant manager or a store manager. They can just pick you up and move you. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I can't handle that much disruption in my life. Th that's okay. So I, I kind of had turned that down and, um, but I just, I don't know. She was so bizarre. So, um, American wages always rub you the wrong way. You were, you were making more in the nineties at 15 untrained work. Yeah. Like our pay rates here suck. They, they really do. I think when I left the casino, <sighs> I think I was making like $13 an hour or like just over 14 somewhere in there um then uh we moved from new jersey to arkansas and um eventually i started working at walmart down here and if you worked the overnight stock position you got um a dollar more 
I believe it was, uh, it was 50, cents. 50 cents more. And then if you worked in the dairy or frozen department, that was a dollar more, right? Uh, yes. Yes. So, um, have a good night, Mrs. Rakuru. Thanks for hanging out. So it was, um, I, I, I did the overnight stock and I think when I left there, I was making, Ooh, that was loud. Uh, 10 or 11 an hour, I think. But I, I had like a mental break working there. So I was like, yeah, no, I'm out. Um, <laughs> can't, can't do this no more. My, my body was, was pissed and, um, and, uh, my brain was like, yeah, this, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna work. So I ended up having to, um, bow out of there. And then I was gonna work for another grocery store chain. Um, down here that was local. Or maybe regional. I'm not sure how far their stores go. It was a chain I had never heard of before moving here. Um, and, uh, well, yeah, I guess the taxes kind of balance that out. Um, I went for an interview. All I wanted to do was stock shelves. Now, when I worked at Walmart, I did not touch money. I was, I was stock. I was a peon that stocked the, the effing shelves. You take the thing off the pallet, you put it away, you put the overstock on the floor, and then at the end of the night, um, crews would come in like at 6 a.m. and they'd put the overstock up and scan it at that time. Then it got to be where they phased that out and we just put the overstock up and they were like, fuck it. Um, but uh, I did not run register at all. When I filled out my application for this, this, other, this other store, this other chain, um, I never put on there that I ran register for Walmart. Nowhere. I said I stocked shelves. When they did my interview with me, they were like, yeah, you know, our register system's the same as Walmart and stuff. And I'm just kind of standing there looking at the, the lady and I'm like, okay. And I wasn't sure if I was supposed to say out loud okay, but I never ran register at Walmart, so that doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, but that seemed kind of rude. So they never, or she never said, did you run register at Walmart? So I never answered, no. Then they're telling me, okay, well, what we really need right now is a temporary key person. And I'm like, a temporary key person. She goes, yeah, we have somebody that we're training to be an assistant manager, but she can't take over the assistant manager position until she hits 18. She'll be 18 in like three months. And I'm like, it was three to six months. I can't remember what it was. So she's like, so we need somebody to temporarily be assistant manager um, for closing shifts certain days a week. And... Um, and then when she hits 18 and she can take over the assistant manage management position, then we'll, we'll move, um, we'll move that person to, to stock and, and register. And I was like, or, or to stock or something, I, I guess their stock people were in register. Um, and I was just kind of standing there staring at her. I'm like, uh, huh. She took me on a whole tour of the store. She's like, okay, well, this is where the stock room is. So you would have to unload trucks um, this day and this day. And, you know, this is where you would, would put the pallets at and, and whatnot. And and I'm like, uh-huh. And I, I was just kind of like deer in headlights because I'm still processing the whole temporary key thing. And then she's like, and, you know, and if there's any problems up front, you would have to... to to rule on whatever the issue is out there. And then our managers go out and get shopping carts. Um, if nobody's available to go do it. And I'm like, okay. And, um, 
I was like, shopping carts weren't a big deal because we got shopping carts at, at Walmart at the end of, like, after our last breaks when we were coming back before we started to, to clean and make the store look pretty and everything presentable. So that wasn't that big of a deal to me. So I was like, okay. That was, that was, a, that was a nothing. The thing that, that I didn't want and I have never wanted is being handed keys to a business that I did not own. And being responsible for setting the security alarms at the end of the night. Remember, I flip numbers around. I've never had to set a security alarm. We don't have one. Well, we can't really afford one. But, um... I I've never had to do that. And my dyslexic ass, I'm just screaming in my brain, Oh my god, I'm gonna fuck up these numbers and then there's gonna be cops and then there's gonna be a whole thingy. And, and I don't want this. I didn't want to unload trucks. Um, I didn't mind unloading the shit off the pallets. I did mind unloading the pallets off of the trucks. Because I had hurt my back. Um, technically off the clock at Walmart. But it still wasn't... It was still touchy. And I was like... I... And, and, my, my brain is just screaming at me. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. This is not what I applied for. Um, and I kept telling my brain to shut the fuck up. That we needed the money. So, because the husband wasn't working at the time, I don't think. And, um, and I was just like, I don't, I don't want this. And... You know, I'm thinking, well, no, maybe my brain's just being super anxiety, you know, something new. I can't handle this sort of thing. So I was like, Let, let's, let's try. So I went in for my first day of training. They had me filling out a shit ton of paperwork that seemed to take forever. And then the store manager was getting ready to leave. And she's like, okay, well, for the rest of the day, I'm just going to throw you up on registers and you can observe, you know, the system's the same as it was at Walmart. Again, I'm like. And I'm thinking in the back of my brain and, and telling my brain filter not to open my mouth. And I'm like, that's nice. That doesn't mean anything to me. And I'm just like, uh-huh. Like, we never stood behind a register at Walmart on overnight stock. I don't know what the deal was. Because she had somebody else that had come from another Walmart store working there. I guess maybe that Walmart store during the day... I guess day stock ran register also. Overnight stock didn't touch a register. There were no registers open. There was one cashier on overnight at our at our Walmart location because we were just a grocery. We weren't like the whole house goods and stuff. We were just food. Um, so there was one person that knew how to do like um, Western Union and, and stuff and they would have one register open and the rest were self-check for the rest of the night. Like, so I'm standing there trying to watch this girl running register, but she's not really telling me what she's doing. She's just kind of doing it. Like, she's not explaining how their systems go and, and things. And, and I almost said to her, train me like I've never done this before. But I didn't because I was such a bundle of nerves. I was just trying to keep myself in one little piece and instead of, you know, completely just losing it. By the time I got home, I was a fucking mess, and the, the next day I had to call, and I'm like, no, I can't do this. This is too much for me, and th this is not, this is not what I, what I want. It, it, it was just like, they were only going to pay me, <laughs> they were only going to pay me $11 an hour for a temporary key position. I would have been okay with the pay drop when they bumped me out of of the temporary uh, babysitting the the assistant manager position I would have understood that and I would have been okay with that and I would have signed paper saying yeah okay I understand I'm not doing this level of duty I understand that my pay is gonna be less no no they were gonna pay me their stock person like their their stock cashier persons um, wage while keeping this seat warm in the assistant manager's spot and I'm like there's no fucking way you're paying me $11 an hour to have keys and security codes like 
no <laughs> no 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 like that was one of the big things in my brain it's like they're paying me shit for a high stress high responsibility position even if it is temporary and to be perfectly honest I don't know if that other person ever took or stayed in that assistant manager spot because the few times that I've been back in there, like, I, w I refused to go back in that store for, like, two years after I had uh, refused to come back <laughs> and called them and said I couldn't do it because I was embarrassed. But um, every time I've been in there since, I I've never seen this chick that was supposed to take it over. Never. I don't know if she got fired. I don't know if she moved away. I don't know what happened. So... Would I have been stuck in that position, making $11 an hour if something happened and she couldn't take the, uh, like, my luck, I probably would have been, and I'm just like, yeah, no, no, no. But, um, it, it's funny how things work out. My brain is always like, no. And usually whenever my brain's like, no, y no more, something goes funny. So... When I left the craft store shortly after, maybe within two years of leaving the craft store, um, the original owner, who was like the patriarch of the family that was running it, retired, and the person that he had been training to take over running the, the chain fired every single family member that had worked there. And then things started to go downhill. And then after that happened, um, th th they were okay for a while, but then I saw on Facebook that the store went out of business, um, last November, two Novembers ago. I can't remember. It was recently. Um, we'll say within the past two years that they went bankrupt. So I'm like, okay, dodge that one. Um, <laughs> I, I could have gone to work for, for a competitor chain um, where one of the assistant managers ended up. That would have worked out, but, you know, I ended up at, at the casino instead. And uh, But right before we left the casino, like right as I, we made the decision that we were gonna going to move out of state and we turned in our notices... Like, right as that was about to happen, they were talking about how we usually had to have an executive and a, a clerk in, in the credit office at, at all times, or at least on the property. We could be on break or something so that, that table games could function because we were part of, of, of lines of credit and stuff and nobody could pull a, from their line of credit if we weren't there or some, some shit. Um... And only the executives can approve increases on lines or approve brand new lines like the clerks can't. If you do the paperwork on a file, you can't approve the file. There's checks and balances. Um, so they were telling me that for budget reasons, they were talking about, oh, well, the executive that comes in at 4 o'clock, we're going to have them start coming in at 6 o'clock. So if you need something between 4 and 6 a.m., you'll have to call the director and wake him up and get him to approve it. And I'm like, the director takes sleeping pills. Um, he takes them after a certain time at night, and there's been Saturday nights, Sunday mornings, where even the executives have had a hard time getting him to wake up. How is this going to work? Between 4 and 6 a.m., even if it's been dead all night, you'll have a high roller walk-in that has a million-plus line or a $500,000-plus line, and they want an increase. I can't do that. I can't even make the calls on that because on certain dollar amounts for credit lines to find out information if, if they owe money or something at another casino, they'll only talk to another executive. They won't talk to a clerk if it's over a certain dollar amount at some casinos. And I'm like, because they'll ask, are you a clerk or an exec? And I'm like, I'm a clerk. They're like, well, I need to talk to your exec. So I'm like, how is this going to work? Because I have to do all the bullshit that I'm not being paid to do and then make this phone call and hope this dude wakes up and give him what he's asked, what he's looking for so that he can make a decision so that 
I can do what he wants to with his code and then when he comes in he has to sign off on it I'm like this has all sorts of ass fuckery all over it and I don't want no parts of it and um I think they had just started that and that's when I said to Russell I said okay fine I, I yield between other stuff that was going on in our personal lives and and then the whole work fuckery that was starting to happen I'm like nope I'm out so then we moved down here and and then the director ended up either getting laid off or, or, or quit or, or was fired. And then one of the executives became the impromptu director. She really didn't want it. I don't even know if she's still there. And, and just like shit just like went went to went to all sorts of holy hell. So I, I got out at a good time. <laughs> I always seem to have a good time of, of getting out. So I don't know. But that's going to be it for today. I know we didn't get much done, and it looks a little bright on the camera, but that's because the camera's being weird. So, yeah, the way the... That's a, that's a little better. I mean, you can... I've got a, I've got a daylight bulb in, in my one light, so um, it's reflecting back the, the bright blue, the lighter blue, much harsher. And so you're not really picking up, like, the, our dark blue base with that other light on, but... You know, we kind of have a, a glow thing happening. I, this one was always going to be a bit of a challenge to, to pull off um, with, with what we had to work with. So I'm, I'm not surprised it looks a little a little janky, but that's okay. Um, we didn't get a whole lot done today, but we did get some clouds. And, you know, I ran my mouth for forever, so I do apologize for that. Um, but uh, we're going to call it there for today. We're going to go visit someone else. Um, we're going to go visit Dr. MTG. I think he's still still um streaming so um next stream is going to be on wednesday providing you know weather permitting and um because i don't play challengers when there's storms as you can hear the thunder in the background i think um but uh yeah so next next will be wednesday for a wild challenges stream thursday will be parkitect and friday will be planet zoo so you guys have a great night and I will see you on Wednesday. Thanks for hanging out and thanks for the raid.